Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to another StarCraft video. Now what I got for you today is another very long match, but this time around it is going to be Zerg versus Terran. And I say by the way another, it's because of yesterday's video, I decided to simply open up a really long replay of a game that was recently played at Home Story Cup. That game was a Zerg versus Zerg uh, between Bly and Stevano, and it turns out to be one of the best games that I have seen seen in recent times. So if you haven't seen that one just yet, I'll post a link to it down below. But regardless, today I've done the same thing. I found an extremely long replay played in the new multiplayer balance patch and I am excited to find out why this game went on for so much longer than the average game in the current meta does. So spawning here in the bottom right hand corner of Acid Plant LE and already going for that really quick spawning pool, he's from Sweden and he goes goes by the name of Namshar, and his opponent spawning in the opposite corner, playing with the red Terran SCVs. He's from France, he actually recently came out of his StarCraft 2 retirement. We're currently looking inside of the main base of Marine Lord. Namshar did decide to go for that quick spawning pool, but then also followed it up with a hatchery, so nothing all too crazy. Um, this is part of a best of three series, if I'm not mistaken, so that does mean that he may have gotten cheesed or something in, in one of the prior matches, but I quite literally just looked at how long the replay was, and I figured this would be the game to cast today. So let me know down below, by the way, what you think of these kind of games. I'm very curious to find out your reaction as well, because while I obviously don't know who wins these kind of games, we do know that it's not gonna, like, end early, so maybe that, like creates a little bit of friction, but anyways, let, let me know down below, and obviously, I can always change these kind of things in the future. Now, I love watching these kind of games go, because the thing is, with the new balance patch, there's a lot of changes as far as strategies go. I mean, new units are all of a sudden very viable. For example, uh, we've been seeing uh, a bunch of Cyclone play over at Home Story Cup already as well. In particular, Euthermal showed some really creative styles that really were very interesting. Now, by the way, I love this little move out right here from Marine Lord. He's actually expecting that there might be a little bit of early game aggression, right? So not sending that Reaper straight across the map, he decided to also not get the Marine. So if he would have actually sent the Reaper across, that command center on the low ground would have probably fallen to the first couple of Zerklings that are already out right here by Nemshar, or at the very least it would have been heavily delayed. So love this little move right here from our Terran player in red. Now, I would love to see something creative in this particular game too. Usually, though, it's gonna be the uh, the Terran player, I suppose, who's got a little bit more wiggle room as far as their build order goes. In particular, when they go for that 1-1-1, one, 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 you can basically produce anything out of this kind of unit composition, right? If you get your uh, one barracks, one factory, one starport, usually you can, uh, you can produce a wide variety of units. And actually... <sighs> no, not again. Oh, man, no way. Um... We do see that really quick third refinery now coming up here for the Terran player, and that one's actually really, really important. We've seen this in a couple of games before. Maybe there's another build that also uses that quick third refinery, but we've uh, we've seen this in a couple of games before that Future played. I actually also uploaded those matches to the YouTube channel, and basically, I mean... Uh, we, we should see the fusion core coming up right now, though, if that's the case. But basically, and by the way, there's like a Hellion being a nuisance. Um, but basically, whenever he went for that third refinery really quickly, he also followed it up with a fusion core and then an eventual... <gasps> is that it? Oh, there it is! <laughs> the eventual battle cruiser. Now, hold your horses. There, there could also still be Liberator ranged coming up, okay? I mean, there's still a good chance for that. I love this, by the way. Using the Marine and also the Viking to shoo away that Overlord. The Overlord didn't really see very much and then switching it over. Is he gonna go Battle Cruiser? I mean, if he starts up a Liberator, it, yeah, no, he is gonna go Battle Cruiser. So there was a build for a while where you would go for the Liberator ranged. And with ranged Liberators, you can basically seed chop like right over here and somehow still hit this mineral line. You're like, how does that. Well, I don't get it either, but regardless, um, I think I think this has to be 
a serious Battle Cruiser game. So the games that we saw future play, I think those were ladder games or at the very least practice games. Maybe some of them were part of show matches as well. But this was played at Home Story Cup, right? This is a, a legitimate tournament with a $20,000 prize pool. Players are not going to play their cheeky strategies just to, just to try and mess around, right? And, and they don't want to just, you know, lose a game because of some silly strategy that they tried out. So this is actually a game where Marine Lord feels like this is a good strategy and something that he can beat Namshar with. With. So I'm excited to figure this out. Now, great scout there. Nemshar does see that uh, that fusion core, which is absolutely critical. Uh, actually, let me let me grab the vision right there of the queen. So there we go. He does see that there is a fusion core. Did decide to get a couple spore chronos already. He's now also getting himself that lair as well as an extra queen. Currently, um, currently not all too worried about the battle cruiser, and I think that's actually fair. I love this though. So it's not going to be any kind of. Um, and he kind of like cloaked Benshi play, he knows that right now. But he's still gonna need the Queens in a good position. Plus, we do see some of those Hellbats now coming up as well. So this is not Hellbat Benshi, which is what we've been seeing for a little while. Instead, this is gonna be Hellbat Battle Cruiser. Is he gonna jump it across? There it is, and it does indeed jump straight to the other side of the map. Not going after the Mineral Line, instead, he's gonna try and see if he can deal some damage right here to those Queens. Now, he did not get the weapon refit, so no Yamato cannon on this battle cruiser. The Hellions actually were already dealt with kind of smoothly there. And while the one Viking actually... Man, that Viking got seven kills. What the... Out of all the units here that I expected to kill any workers, it was not the Viking that I that I thought was going to be the hero. <laughs> there's a Hellbat, there's a, there's a battle cruiser. But the Viking that gave his life actually ended up getting seven of those worker kills, or at the very least, ooh, a whole lot of them. Now, the Better Cruiser does stay alive, which is absolutely critical. The thing about the Better Cruiser is that it doesn't only just cost you... He's already switching out, by the way, but it doesn't just only cost you, um, you know, the 400 minerals and then the 300 gas, uh, the 300 gas of the Better Cruiser itself. It also costs, obviously, the Tech Lab as well as that Fusion Core. So, by no stretch is it a cheap unit. I was wondering if he was going to switch into more of those battle cruisers, but judging by this production tab, there's mostly just a lot of factories now coming up, which does indicate that Marine Lord wants to transition towards mech. Cool, cool stuff. So I briefly brought it up just now, right? Um, Euthermal has been playing some really cool styles in the Terran versus Zerg matchup. So what we saw him do, for example, against Serral, uh, was focus on, uh, on not on Hydralisk, sorry, that was the counter for Serral, but he was focusing on a lot of Cyclones as well as a lot of Banshees. So he had like a hit squad of like six, seven, eight or so Banshees uh, with both of the upgrades roaming the map and picking up a lot more than you would anticipate. And the reason, by the way, why that is viable is because of the new change to the cost of their hyperflight rotors, or at the very least it makes it more viable. Plus, obviously, the change right now to the Cyclone as well. Now, this is nice. And I'm sure getting the Zerklings into that third base here of the Terran player. At the same time, though, the Hellions are making their way downtown. They're gonna try and see if they can pick up some units as well. Now, the Banelings eventually all do get picked off, and with that, Marine Lord apparently is feeling confident. Zerklings, though, still going to town. They managed to kill 11 of those, SCV or, uh, 11 of those uh, SCVs already. But now that the drones are in trouble, I think a lot of that work account should be evened up. And actually, one of the queens right there holding the door properly against her fellow queens as well, which isn't ideal. Anyways, here are some Thors. So you can see right here already, right? The Thors, they ended up losing one armor. Which doesn't sound very significant, but it makes it so that Zerklings, as well as Mutas and all of the other units, deal significantly more damage to them. Now, even though the Thor still did pick up 8 worker kills right there, or 8 Zerkling kills rather, it actually still, uh, it still ended up almost falling, and obviously the cost of repair is not just to be forgotten about. It's not the cheapest thing in the world to do, and once again, the Battle Cruiser is feeling brave. It's gonna continue dealing a little bit of damage right now, picking up whatever it can. And since it can now move and shoot at the same time, it did get another one of those queens for its troubles. I love this though. It's Battle Cruiser Harass. Now, I have no idea if this is actually gonna be a standard. But whenever he's in trouble and your micro is good enough, you can just simply jump it away to the other side of the map and feel confident that you can once again repair it. And there we go. The Spore Crawler was found. I think a couple SCVs will probably be pulled off the line here to once again repair that BC up to full hit points. And now we have the follow-up push. 
So this is actually really nice, right? This is going to be great against uh, just like Hydraling Bane and whatnot. But still, if the Hydras just push forward without the Siege Tanks being, uh, being sieged up, that does make it much better. Actually, Blue Flame is already done as well. Beautiful little play here by Marine Lord. He found himself a build order where he allows himself to push the Zerg with that Battlecruiser Hellbat army, potentially even win the game, obviously. But he also now has a follow-up plan, and that's that's important, right? You can't just go for, like, an early game push and then cross your fingers, hope you can win the game. It has to transition towards something more. Now, the reason, obviously, why we see Terran players usually play really aggressive in the Terran versus Zerg matchup is because they don't want Zerg players to sit at, like, 80 drones by the 7 minute mark, right? Like you don't want the Zerg to just simply sit back. And with this, a lot of workers have actually gone down. The better cruiser is still going to town as well. It's so sick. It's almost got its tactical jump once again off cooldown, as you can see with that little, little thing right here. There we go. And it once again is going to be able to continue that harassment for a little while longer. But this is so cool. Transitioning towards a much more standard mech-based army. Now, no focus on Cyclones just yet. Interestingly enough, I believe in the games that we saw Euthermal play, he didn't really get himself a single Cyclone whatsoever, or sort of rather a single Siege Tank whatsoever. He instead opted to go for a lot of Cyclone play, which turned out to be way more powerful than I had anticipated. Now, by the way, these Medivacs, they're loaded up with the Hellbats. I think what he's planning on, do on doing is boosting them forward and then dropping the Hellbats on top of the Zerklings and the Hydralisk. And they can obviously deal a enormous amount of damage in a short amount of time. Oh my god. Ooh, there was one creep tumor right there, I think, underneath those tanks. That hurt quite a bit. Well, there we go. Blinding clouds are being activated as Zerk is already at that hive tech. Hellbats are being dropped on all of those Hydras, but that's still a lot of damage. Those clumped up siege tanks there in the back certainly did not get as many shots in as they would have liked. By the way, the battle cruiser still going to town. Still going to town. It's actually trying to pick up a hatchery right now as well. And while Marine Lord looks like he will eventually be forced to go back home again as well, this is still pretty sick. We've seen in the games that Future played, right? I think in a game against Cham. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and link that as well down below in case you're interested, but... In the game that Future played against Cham, we found out that Hydras really are not the counter to better cruisers. I mean, this is only a, obviously a single better cruiser, but I even wouldn't mind it right now if Marine Lord decides to go back into mass battle cruiser production. Is there a spire anywhere? Yeah, there is a spire already out, so maybe maybe it's actually a pretty bad idea. Actually, never mind. I don't think he needs to go back to battle cruisers. I think the, the single battle cruiser is good, although goodbye. <laughs> the Viper yoinked it away. It crossed its fingers. Well, I mean, can they cross their fingers? I'm, I'm <laughs> I've never really thought if a, if a Viper had fingers, but it did cross its fingers and hoped that the better cruiser pilot wasn't paying attention. Turns out Marine Lord was on top of it, and he did just once again jump it back home. There it is in the back. It's already got 23 kills, man. That's a sick amount. Really good. Regardless, though, Nemshar now pushing forward. He's once again going to have to deal with a lot of those Hellbats and the Siege Tanks in the back while they are being blind and clouded. Eventually, they are gonna once again be available. A lot of those Vikings, though, did end up falling there, which is really, really important to point out. I mean, actually, it's only two of them right now, but he only had a couple here. He needs to keep those things alive, because they're really the only counter that he's got right now against those Vipers. Or I guess he can just continue pushing while the Vipers are trying to replenish some of their energy. Ugh, a little bit of a sloppy move there by Marine Lord. Does end up losing a couple of those Medivex and then the Hellbats for free as well, but... The hero battle cruiser is here right now anyway, right? So I don't see what could possibly go wrong in this engagement. Zerk trying to be cautious. He needs to once again land those beautiful blinding clouds. Although look at the spread right here on those tanks. That is ridiculous. How are you going to break this? Plus three, plus three is just about to finish here for Zerk. He did not get himself a greater Spire just yet, but he does have a lot of those Vipers. I guess if you have enough Vipers, you can just simply land the uh, the Blinding Clouds everywhere. Reinforcing Hellbats coming up, though. And now also, finally, some Cyclones being added into the mix. I love this. So sick. But here we go. Nemshark cannot wait. He's going to use his Blinding Clouds on as many of those Siege Tanks as possible. Trying to be relatively conservative about it as well. But that hero Battle Cruiser, once again, right? together with the Vikings, ended up killing a lot of those Vipers. And the Vipers are really the lifeline right now for Zerg. Sure, Nemshar is going to be able to push this army back here for now, or I guess so. 
Yeah, there we go. The army does decide to return, but that was a really, really expensive uh, army to lose. If there's one unit here in the Zerg army that you don't want to lose, it's the Vipers. Like, it, it kind of feels similar to, for example, like Protoss and, and their sentries, right? Or like Protoss and their High Templar. You don't really want to lose them, because if you lose them, you're basically forced to remake them, and they're very, very expensive as far as their gas cost goes, which is the main, main limiting factor right now for Zerg. And obviously, if you don't have them alive anymore, it kind of puts the pressure off of Marine Lord for like a minute as well, because it takes some time for them to be rebuilt and for them to accumulate energy once more, and that means that Marine Lord can continue building up that force. Great play here, I love it. Of course, the better cruiser. <laughs> Dude, I love how better cruisers actually seem to have a spot in the meta right now, though. Maybe it's still a bit of a meme, right? It could still be a bit of a meme. According to Euthermal, it kind of still is. Although he did also end up uh, trying to transition to them in some of the matches that we saw him play. They actually seem to be much, much better, though, than they once were. Right? Just the fact that they can move and shoot at the same time is ridiculous. Although, right now... Ooh, nope. <laughs> the better cruiser almost died there. But he was still paying attention to it, and eventually, I think it should be getting repaired once again. Actually, the SCVs are working on the CC. I guess a couple of the Banes tried to get in there as well. Regardless, though, while this is all going on, once again, Marine Lord is making a move across the map in a similar direction, trying to go after that fifth base. Battles, or the Banelings, rather, though, are going down everywhere. Battles are happening all over the map. Man, he is so siege tank heavy. This is so interesting to see. Other Terran mech styles that we've seen so far, they have not really been nearly as siege tank heavy. Beautiful abducts here, though, by Nemshar. Really, really nicely done. And obviously, <laughs> the better cruiser is making his way to watch the other side of the map, trying to see whatever damage it can do. But I think, uh, I think Marine Lord has probably been halted here for now. <laughs> it's denying mining off of so much. It's denying mining for so very long. Now, I kind of would have liked to see a second starport, I think. A second starport to produce additional Vikings. Is it going to get a kill on a base? It almost looks like it will. That Hydra, not a chance, mate. That Hydra will be picked off. Liberators are also available. Yeah, there we go. So, so I think Vikings into Liberators would be very, very good right now. Because you can really start that slow push. But the Queens, no! No, 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 not the... Not, no! <sighs> The hero battle cruiser. Moment of silence, please. M mute the game. Okay, thank you. I hope you didn't say anything, by the way. I, I hope so. To show your respect to the hero, the hero, hero battle cruiser. No, but seriously though, that was that was pretty sweet. That was honestly really impressive. Anyways, Namshar did actually manage to get himself a really solid amount of bases out, right? How many workers has he lost in the grand scheme of things? It's okay. He didn't lose that much. He is still maxed out. He still does have 80 drones. He's now also already getting himself the plus two, plus three, plus um, three once again, right? He's already got a really good amount of upgrades here. Um, but I like this idea by, by Marine Lord, though. I kind of wish this was a, just a regular command center and then to morph it into a planetary. I think that would be a really strong position as well. Hellbats made the way towards the bottom left, and this is wonderful. This does mean that part of that Hydra ball will once again be forced over in that direction. But um, yeah, this is this is not a bad situation whatsoever. And if the gold comes into play here as well, with a couple of these missile turrets, there's a lot of potential right here for Marine Lord to just simply start mining so very much. He's now adding on additional factories. That's gonna be, I think, eight in total, right? That's a very good amount of factories. You can produce a stupid amount. Still would like to see the second, the second starboard. I think he could have done that a little bit earlier. Right now, though, the Brute Lords are out, and sure, there's a couple of Vikings remaining, seven of them in total. But is that going to be enough? Now, keep in mind, Thors are now also really, really good when it comes to dealing with Brute Lords. Thors have more or less been changed into not so much like an all-round unit, but much more so into a unit that is great when it comes to, like, killing bigger targets. So it's really good at killing Ultras, it's really good at killing, uh, killing uh, Brute Lords, for example, as well. It deals a lot of damage in that regard. Although a lot of people are currently arguing that it might still be a little bit too weak. There's no denying that it is going to be much better at dealing with Brutes than it once was. Now, this is a scary Zerg army, but the Siege Tanks can still 100% turn the tide of battle. Love the Parasitic Bombs there, but great split once again by Marine Lord. Sending the weakened uh, Vikings to their own graves. Although one of them apparently does live to tell the tale. 
And that does mean that he can continue poking away at those brutes and he's preventing them from closing the distance towards those siege tanks. So hey, um, I haven't really seen Mass Thor against Mass Brute Lord just yet. The thing is, Mass Thor is, it's, it's, it's like, it's one of those things where a lot of people don't really know very much about it. The gold standard to countering Brute Lords is always going to be Vikings and then obviously the Ghosts. But with the change to the Thor, they might very well be the way to go. So, Marine Lord is producing three Thors at once and two Vikings. Oh my god. Was he producing five Thors there for a split second at once? That is a lot. That's a lot of Thors, man. And how exactly do you counter this right now if you're Zerg? Well, for one, I guess you don't want to, like, lose your bases this often and, like, you know, you, you kind of want to... Uh, keep on the pressure as well. So basically what we saw Serral play against that style from Euthermal was a heavy focus on Hydras, then eventually Brute Lords, but also a lot of Vipers. And he basically had that killer instinct where he just jumped the Terran army when it was still small. But obviously this is a different kind of unit composition, right? Like Marine Lord really focusing on those siege tanks. I would kind of like him to actually start adding on some, um, some, uh, what are they called? Some, uh, Cyclones as well. I think that would be really cool. Anyways, looks like Namshar is making himself up for an engagement. He may just simply um, not attack the army whatsoever and use the blinding clouds on top of that planetary fortress instead. Although the planetary was not actually perfectly blinding clouded whatsoever, the Hydras do still manage to get the kill. The Thors now, though, in their high impact mode, they're gonna go after as many of those Zerg units as they can. Still a lot of Brute Lords available as well, but this is scary though, those Vikings, man. They are continuously zoning this army, and now with the uh, Vipers being out of Parasitic Bombs, they do not have energy for it. I think that Marine Lord once again manages to get into a decent position. Three Siege Tanks though, Unseeged. Oh, I love that. Such a cool move, right? Unseeged Tanks actually has have more single target damage output, or DPS, um, than their Siege Top uh, counterpart. This kind of feels like... Um, Immortals being sent across the map in the late game of uh, Protoss vs. Zerg, right? Where sometimes you've got some leftover Immortals and in the late game you don't really want them anymore. So you just sort of send your four Immortals that are left over and right-click them on a, on a hatchery. And if you manage to get in range, they deal a lot of damage. Apparently he's now replacing most of his Siege Tank-based army with more and more Thors. So there's still 11 Siege Tanks remaining, so it's not like there's a small amount, but there's definitely no more Siege Tanks in production here for a little while already. He does still have a couple of those Cyclones here available as well. They're gonna be very useful in, for example, the case where uh, there's gonna be, like, units you can kite. Although I don't really see his opponent, like, playing, playing Ultras here anytime soon. This is still a really menacing-looking army. Alright, so, so where does Marine Lord take this from here? Is he just gonna continue pushing? Well, that's an important snipe. Beautiful target firing right there. Getting himself... Ooh, one Viper and a second Viper as well. That's really critical, trying to get all of those units. Now, I love this little counter-attack though. I do think that Namshar is doing all the right things, but he's not trading very efficiently, right? It seems like he's throwing away a lot of units, and he's also not really dealing a lot of damage here. These, uh, these Thors, I don't know how this fight is gonna go. I think they're gonna be able to clean this up relatively easily, in particular when the Hydras can't reach. But while that's all going on, the big fight is happening near the natural location of the Zerg player. Are there any Vipers remaining? There's zero Vipers. That's one of the things Serral did as well. He went up to like eight or so uh, Vipers in those scenarios. He, he really did have a lot. I guess the Nemshar did have a lot of, as well though, but he's already lost... He lost 17 Vipers?! Oh, gee, okay. Well, hey. Yep. For those of you that play Zerg who are wondering, if you lose as many Vipers as Vikings died in the game, that's not really the situation you want to be in. Now, obviously, it's not an easy unit to control. Anyways, drones are trying to make their way towards another mining hatchery. Apparently, that one is gonna be the one in the top right corner. Marine Lord is caught at a bit of a weird angle, though. He can't really leave this very easily, right? And that's critical to point out as well. This is a scary Terran army, but it also takes about four and a half hours to build. And right now we see that transition towards a lot of those Cyclones instead. So now that the majority of the Brute Lords... Well, I say that, but now that the majority of the Brute Lords are... are I guess, I guess kind of countered? I mean, if you lose all of those Thors, you're going to be in some trouble, though. There's really not that many Vikings remaining either. He's going to try and see if he can pick up one of them. Nice little bit of target firing. That's two of them. Nicely done. But um, still, like, there's not really... I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little confused about the mass Thor switch, honestly. I think nah, that Marine Lord may have been a little confused as well. I mean, he's still got a couple Thors out. 
But they didn't really seem to pack the punch that he was looking for, right? I mean, all of the Brutes are still alive. Instead, we now see that Cyclone switch. Now, Cyclones do need to lock on at 5 range, which really is not that far. I think that the range at which a Brute Lord can throw its little Brute Links is 10. So, in order for, in order for a uh, Cyclone to lock on, it does need to be really close. Obviously, the Vikings are still going to be able to, uh, to add in the damage, too. Here we go, though. Once again, it looks like a big fight is coming up. He did manage to kill another base. Marine Lord, that is. He has been trying to slow down the Zerg for a little while already, which I really do like. Right? He's killed a lot of hatcheries. Four hatcheries, actually, in the grand scheme of things. But look at that trading, right? So, while Nemshar has been having a good economy here for a little while, he doesn't have the most booming economy either. Big fight happening, though. All of the Hydras are being shot at by the majority of those siege tanks. Once again, the Vipers are being target-fired down. A lot of the Vikings do remain, however. Queen's desperately trying to transfuse both the Brute Lords as well as each other, but I don't know if there's enough left over. Vikings are being cutted around. Eventually, though, I think that Zerg did get a good trade there, right? I mean, the thing is, the Terran army takes forever to build up, and Zerg is gonna be in a position where they can now take a bit of a breath, right? Like, take a bit of a breather. He also denied this base, which is excellent, really, really important. But it's gonna take some time for Terran to continue building up this army. And actually, while this was all going on, the main run out, the natural run out, the third and the fourth are also running very low. And even the fifth base of Marine Lord is running out of minerals. Namshar only with 53 drones, though. I think if he would have been at like 70 with that big fight, he would be in a phenomenal position to just simply get back into the swing of things and to really take a stab at that army. But as it is right now, sure, he's ahead supply-wise, but Marine Lord is still building up that mech army, and Namshar can't really capitalize on this scenario. It's not like he can go and win the game right now. Although, if he gets free Thors like that, that makes it a little bit easier. Siege Snake in the back, though. Ooh, good pullback right there by Namshar. And uh, he is going to try and see if he can uh, maybe get the, the Brute Lords involved. Now, the Queens are really nice, too, though. That, that nerf to transfuse, the way it now uh, does a portion of its heal over time, is actually quite substantial in this kind of scenario, right? Because that's a lot of overhealing there. That's a lot of wasted energy on those queens. Now, Marine Lord is still trying to set up a gold. He's been doing that for a little while. Now, I love this, though. I think I've been pointing that out, right? But I love these, these mech-based hit squads of units that are just dedicated to taking out a base. He knows he's likely going to lose this, uh, this, uh, this army. But he also, you know, has the potential of taking out that entire army and since... Or taking out that entire economy here. And since he still has the army to back this up with as well to prevent the Zerg push, I think this is pretty cool. Well, I do say that though, but Nemshar does decide to move forward. He does decide to go after the, uh, after the Orbital Command. That's the one actually that was originally in the main and it does fall there as well. There's a Planetary Fortress here on the left-hand side, which is good. The base in the top right-hand corner, by the way, did end up falling. And this is starting to be a really scrappy game. Man, I'm loving these long games. I hope you do too. Even though we already know that the game is long. It's really sick to see uh, see what these games turn out to be, though. Because this is like, like almost like an undiscovered territory in StarCraft, you know? Like, usually when it comes to new patches, players will figure out the early game first. Because, you know, that's what they play most often. So if you if you get to a uh, you know a mid game usually you already can be kind of happy but right now we are definitely set in the late game and this is where most people are very un unfamiliar with how it actually should look. Ooh, once again, nice blinding cloud. But is there enough Zerg now left over? The Hydra ball is moving in from the right hand side as well. Not all the tanks were sieged up just yet, but I don't think there's going to be enough right here for the Zerg to really engage. He needs some like other beefy units in here, man. I don't think you want to take the Hydras through the uh, meat grinder, man. That's minced Hydralisk right there. Look at that. Put it on the barbecue. It'll probably taste like chicken. <laughs> probably, okay. Sounds about right. Anyways, that, that still is a lot, of, a lot of dead Hydras, though. And that's the kind of traits that Nemshar cannot make. Look at the amount of resources lost here for Zerk. And I guess it's a couple, a couple more Hydras right there to add to the dead unit list. Now that doesn't help. The uh, command center can't actually lend. Marine Lord, though, doesn't quite want to unseach, but that is a massive blinding cloud. The Hydra's all of a sudden ready to close that distance. Beautiful move there by Nemshar. The question is, though, does he have enough left over? Great target firing right there, actually, by Marine Lord as well. Trying to shoot those siege tanks in the middle of that Hydra ball. And while eventually it does look like maybe the Hydra. 
Hydras will clean up. That still was much more than Nemshar was supposed to do. Having all of those tanks clumped up and then like one, one of those blinding clouds getting rid of it all. That was, uh, that was well done. One brave, brave driver in that siege tank. Going after some of those apparently 10 foot tall monsters. Apparently uh, Hydras are like three meters tall. They, they definitely do pack a punch. It must be pretty terrifying to see in real life, but... <laughs> Regardless... Nemshar is now going up against a Terran player who's got a gold base. And that's where things get scary. Sure, he's once again going to continue mining there, but I think he planned on finishing the game with the army that he had just a second ago. Because as soon as this gold base starts getting into effect, and we are literally just seconds from that, the gold base is going to bring out so much additional income off of the small amount of workers here that the players have. And this actually hurts as well. That is a 3-3 siege tank. There's no way you can fight that with just your drones, right? That's going to hurt a lot. Looks like the Hydras, though, will be able to keep, uh, keep this base alive here once they get rid of that tank. Liberators, though, coming up in this direction, too. And more tanks are making their way in this direction, too. Whereas part of that army, once again, is set up on the center of the map. Trying to keep that gold base alive. Man, it's like so... Like so aggression focused. A very harassment focused. Which is like not, not the way that we saw mech being played for, for years at all. Like the thing is about Terran mech. I think a lot of people still have, have Terran mech with like a bad taste in their mouth. Actually hold that thought because it looks like Zerk is going to go for a big push here. A couple of those uh, siege tanks will be picked off. A couple of hydras there in the process as well. But this is a great little move out right there by Nemshar. Marine Lord obviously splitting up his army is great, but it does mean that he's not going to have that big of an army defending the bases that are so very important to him right now as well. If Nemshar could actually catch these tanks as well, that's a really nice move. Trying to target fire down the tanks, trying to get uh, that splash damage out of the equation. There we go. Beautiful move actually here by Nemshar. Getting a lot of value. Now, Marine Lord is backing up towards the safety of that planetary. A little bit of an overextension there by Nemshar. We've been seeing a couple of those moves where he seems a little desperate and maybe a little bit too eager. Look at that kiting, though. So sick. So sick. Oh, my God. Well, I guess we figured out why Marine Lord's mineral count all of a sudden dropped. There's about a thousand Hellions waiting to roast some of those juicy, juicy Hydras. I was talking about the barbecue, right? Well, there it is. <laughs> You don't even need a, any charcoal anymore. Just get yourself a Hellion. It'll be done in a second. And indeed, Nemshar does decide to GG out. Um, but while, what I was trying to say, right? Hold up. Let me, let me take a sip of water. What I was trying to say is that I think a lot of people still think of Terran Mech as that really boring, turtly Terran style. Where Terran sits back on five bases, maxes out, and then finally moves across. Whereas Marine Lord in this game and some other players have really been showing us, like Gumiel obviously comes to mind. I haven't really seen him play in the new patch yet, but I would, I would really like to. Um, but Gumiel comes to mind, Euthermal comes to mind. They've been really showing us games. Future comes to mind as well. Um, where, where players are playing Terran Mech in a much more aggressive and a much more um, out on the map active kind of way. And I think it's really, really cool. So well played match right there by a Marine Lord. We can't forget about the hero battle cruiser, by the way. I mean, that was all in the same match. Feels like I casted like four games instead of just one. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed watching this game. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. A special shout out to the Patreon supporters. You guys know that you're awesome. Thank you very much. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.